Hi. I'm SK Shlomo. Is it okay if I tell you a story? Last summer, my whole world transformed. Since the age of 19, I had lived my life in a whirlwind, touring the globe, performing with heroes, and living out childhood dreams. But the whole time, something didn't feel right. This is the story of how social media saved my life. Now we all know that social media can be toxic and in my work with Time to Talk Day I came across some numbers which astounded me. The average young person has over 1,500 friends online but over 80% of those young people wouldn't reach out to any of those friends if they had um, a concern with their mental health. Now to me this screams out a question. How can we all change our attitude to social media to build a positive support network. Well, what about me? I learned the hard way not to share too much of myself online not to engage with the messages from strangers. For example, seeking public approval immediately after performing on prime time TV is a slippery slope. Because for every human who loves you for your successes, there are several who will happily take you down under the veil of online anonymity. But still, I'd find myself hours later stuck in a loop desperately scrolling, seeking just one more hit of validation, I'd end up exhausted, isolated, and angry with myself. So I withdrew, I massively reduced my use of social media, and like many other people, when I did share, I'd filter my persona, only posting pictures of my perfect, happy life, pretending everything was just fine when for a lot of the time, I wasn't okay. <laughs> Instead of admitting I wasn't okay, I poured more and more of myself into my work. I toured constantly, playing at festivals like Glastonbury and collaborating with people like Ed Sheeran and Bjork, breaking world records in the process. But despite the accolades, I'd feel empty inside. Two years ago, I decided to confront that emptiness. I did the unthinkable and I came off tour. For the first time in my adult life, I canceled everything to do what I'd resisted this whole time, to become a solo recording artist and make an album of my own. In the first five days, I wrote five sick tracks. I was like, I'm a freaking genius. But on the sixth day, it went wrong. Without the constant distractions of touring, I was left with just myself and my mind. I had no choice but to take a good look inwards. And I did not like what I saw. I felt myself drop into the most terrifying depression. I didn't know what was wrong, but I reached out for some help. I spoke to a doctor who referred me for therapy and in the months that followed, I worked so hard to try and gradually rebuild myself, pull myself through the darkness. 
I found what worked for me and wrote my truth into my songs. But still I felt unstable, like I was walking a tightrope, isolated by the shame of this secret suffering. After almost a year in hiding, my album was almost written, but I would need funds to record it. So I was looking into crowdfunding, something that requires authenticity. But these songs were all about my depression and my friends and very few of my family and certainly none of my fans had any idea I'd been struggling. I was scared that if the word got out, People would see me as unreliable or weak. I thought it would destroy my whole career. But I felt like in order to make progress with my music, I had to be honest. I decided it was time to come out of hiding. And I launched my campaign with a video opening up about my whole struggle. And it was met positively. My total zoomed up to 15%. Now I've been warned I would need a thick skin. So I had been practicing, refining and simplifying my narrative until I'd found what felt like a safe way to be vulnerable. But nothing could prepare me for what happened next. One day, a few weeks into my campaign, I woke up to a barrage of angry tweets from somebody claiming to be a fan, but attacking me about my mental health. He told me I needed to see how low I had stooped. He told me that suicide, depression, were evolution's way of weeding out inadequate men who aren't fit to reproduce. Now I know that online abuse affects many people around the world every single day, and I'm no stranger to the haters, but this hit me hard. It hit me hard because my mind decided to join in the attack. You are worthless. You are nothing. You are an embarrassment to your family, to your children. You don't deserve to live. Looking back, I know these feelings are all too common. These anxieties are amplified within the artificial walls of social media, the echo chamber for all our insecurities. It's like the noise drowns out all reason. And so I found myself drowning, drowning, plunging into terror. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't breathe. I was panicking. I wanted to end it all. But one thing had changed since my last episode with depression. Since I'd been open about it online, my family and my friends and my fans had started checking in with me every day. And a well-timed online message asking if I was okay gave me the strength to share what was happening. To share these fantasies of taking my life. And being met with reassurance and compassion helped me see that I didn't have to isolate myself or attack myself for not feeling good enough to live. Zooming out, I could see I still had so much to live for. That online message saved my life. because it helped me change my attitude towards myself. From helpless victim to empowered human being, able to speak up and ask for support. So I went online and I typed the words, I've been attacked about my mental health. So here is my truth. 
and I posted a heartfelt article about my struggle with PTSD, post-traumatic stress, how as an adult I'd had to go back and revisit surviving a near-death experience from when I was four years old. Now this kind of very personal sharing is not for everybody and I definitely lost some followers. But for me, speaking about the, the trauma, meant, it kind of meant I could reclaim the power that fear had held over me all this time. And the online reaction was overwhelming. My crowd rallied round me, protecting me, and shared my story far and wide. We smashed the crowdfunding target, meaning I could make the album and raise a bunch of money for an amazing charity. Within days, I'd gone from wanting to die to being the subject of a viral survival story. My world was changing and so was my community around me. Because it turns out that despite the discomfort, most people do want to hear truth and are relieved to be given an opportunity to express theirs back. New conversations were happening both online and in person. People were reporting back they were now getting support with issues that they were previously too ashamed to share. Some had even sought professional help as a direct outcome of the campaign. And as for me, I feel so much less isolated. My struggles feel normal, even when they come back in the middle of the night, there's someone around the world in a time zone, online and ready to support me. Now I'm not saying we all need to broadcast our deepest, darkest insecurities. That is not the magic solution to our suicide epidemic. But to feel safe enough to share our setbacks way before they grow into these shameful, destructive secrets. We all need to take small steps towards vulnerability. If, like me, you believe the internet can be a positive tool for social change, like the modern-day virtual village, a digital version of the tribe, I invite you to try something. Try sharing one truth today, big or small. Maybe you lost your call on a really tricky day. Or maybe you shouted at your kid. Or maybe you ate all your friend's biscuits. Or maybe there are some mornings when you just can't face getting out of bed. Either way, by sharing today, you might help somebody else speak their truth tomorrow. Who knows? You might save a life. Thank you.